Hey, I'm Nick Carroll, Long Gamer, and welcome back to FM23, Newton Heath, episode 14. It is that time. It's the 1st of January. Fortunately, I have the in-game editor. Uh, I set this up. I ran <laughs> probably 20 simulations on this for FM22. I set it up for FM23 under the final model that I had, only to have things go a little bit haywire multiple times since the start of this series. Go figure that the game would change that much from FM22 to 23. But anyway, thanks to the in-game editor, we are now into our stadium as the proposed move-in date had switched from January 1st, 2024 to January 1st, 1900. It lost the year that would be moving into the stadium. So our stadium has been updated. It's happened, but 74,310 capacity, New Trafford, matching Old Trafford Stadium in very good condition. A couple things didn't quite translate as in like the year built for the city. Fortunately, they don't play there as well though. They have a different stadium, so it'll work out just fine. And also thanks to that in-game editor, the attendance figures are going to match as they are supposed to with a maximum capacity stadium. We'll see you know, if we do get that 70,000 or so uh, coming to each game but that first game yeah it's today and go figure it's Darlington who we opened the season with and lost three to two let's get into it as for team selection the lineup I want to have is not the lineup we're going to get today we have two players suspended for uh, one of them for yellow card accumulation one of them for a red card uh, a match or two back and still on suspension from that. Uh, two coming back from injuries. One of them cleared to play, one of them not. So there's definitely going to be some changes to what would be my version of the first 11 as we enter this one. And here we are into the stadium. It's not supposed to have a roof, but there you go. That's what they have given us. And my, oh my, isn't it beautiful. New Trafford, welcome to the Premier, no, the National League North. Yes, we are playing in the National League North with this massive, massive crowd. And while it's far from being the proper sellout, that is quite the crowd on hand. So yes, we, we do have a very large crowd here to play in the rain today. And let's see if the team can put the performance to go with it and so far no 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 Fondop is Fondop the one who just scored that because Fondop it is of course it's Fondop now you probably don't know who Fondop is but Fondop agreed to play for us and then Darlington scored yeah because they offered him money and he couldn't but he had no negotiations in place whatsoever when we offered him. But then he picked them over us. Uh, it's been a typical thing of late, and my oh my, has it cost us here? And found up, I think, maybe, was a little jaded by the fact that we offered him all of, you know, nada. And yeah, let's see if we can bounce back. Novak gets that shot off, but it's blocked. Can't beat the first man. We switch over to Ebanks, and Ebanks has both legs taken out from under him. Uh, apparently, the ref thought that was enough of the ball as Novak goes really close. Uh, looked like he had far post wide open, but he tries to go. Well, at that point, for him, it would have been far post, but it would have been back to more post for the goalkeeper positioning. And oh, beautiful chance there, but somehow the defense gets a foot in there and restricts that one and then we do get a shot off but it immediately takes a deflection as well oh my goodness well, we are all over them and there it is ebanks each equalizes you could tell from the early stages of this one that we were making things happen their goal was very much against the run of this early play and ebanks just wanted that one hungry for that one steps in front of his man attacks the ball itself and it's going well. And CX2 is already at a goal. Ebanks steps up in this corner. Novak makes it two and into the lead. Yes. Yes, two to one. 
Okay, Hammond is a concern. Hammond is playing injured. He was cleared to play, cleared to play 90. Uh, but he has somehow taken a yellow card on what looks like maybe he was the one who got the worst of whatever the incident was that gave him that yellow card. Andrew, nice recovery on the press there, and then terrible game. Uh, didn't see the guy coming. Didn't think to pass. And now it equalizes. Against Rota played just like that just after we score. And Fans are, some, are still celebrating our goal, not even looking at the fact that the play has opened up. And here it is, Fondop again. Oh boy, Fondop has just destroyed us here in this first just over half hour as he sets up that pretty much tapping goal. That was, that was all on Fondop uh, creating that one. And that has been the story of this season, by the way be a lot of draws, a lot of draws this season. Avoiding losses, sure, but not coming away with the wins. I mean, we are well ahead in, you know, every metric, and yet it's 2-2. They've had two shots on target, and they've got two goals. Uh, maybe it's time to replace Clayton, but I don't know. Second half underway, Hammond is probably going to be a short-term prospect. However, uh, I do not have a defensive mid on the bench right now as Captain Adam Bale, who's now the weakest player on the entire roster, is the only defensive mid left who is eligible to play today. And I felt that he didn't need to... Ooh, that should be... There's the yellow card for that one. Professional foul. Dangerous professional foul where we clearly got a counterattack on. Uh, oh, great. What happened to Tierney? Tierney's picked up some sort of knock that suddenly sees him with no energy. So Tierney, the guy who would step into him and spot and then sub a center back on. Yeah, you, you might have to change formation uh, to get out of this situation here. Williams was offside. Had no flag race. He made no run. He was just standing there and they kicked the ball to him. Oh, wow. Threw it. Bad giveaway there. Oh, Hammond's going to get sent off the hard way. Just discussing how we were going to deal with the Hammond situation because the only sub was, you know, unavailable and I was about to change formation to get him off. Well, there you go. I got my wish. No big change initially other than we're definitely not going positive. We've dropped to a, a more balanced and we're still the more creative team at the moment as we've added a couple more shots in the six minutes since the red card but being beaten over the top there Tierney oh no that was Jones who was beaten there he's got a 6.2 rating and yeah we are all out of time and we are not covering that midfield very well anymore uh, we're still created but the, the midfield is is not coming together let's let's do something here um We've got to get back behind the ball a little bit better. Cooper, can Cooper play back? No. Can somebody else? Spence can, I think. If we switch Spence and have, yes, there we go. Spence can drop. Uh, let's get Spence kind of on the right. All right, back on the left. That'll drop us a little bit deeper here. A lot of fatigue. Let's go ahead and bring on our new man, Jordan Holm, who is very much Lee Novak-esque. And that is our second substitution. Oh, come on. Fonda. Oh, that's not yeah, it's, it's been all fun up today. But yeah, he's just standing there, which was what we saw in that previous one. But he's definitely pushed up the pitch. Uh, Andrew, I don't want to bring off Tierney. They're starting to catch up in the shots department just a little bit. But we've still been the better team today. And unfortunately, after what's happened with the red card, the sending off, that we were certainly preparing for. And we could have done something sooner. Oh, yes! A Against the recent run of play, Holm gets us a winner, and that is time 
to uh, see this thing up. Just on side for that one, and let's see if we can uh, see this game out the rest of the way. We'll go cautious, but we don't want to get too far behind the ball. I, if there's any one thing that I've really picked up about lower levels and FM, is that unless you have a strong defensive formation and a very strong defense to begin with, sitting back invites pressure. And when pressure comes, inevitably those are given up. So hanging on to a lead late, the best way to hang on to a lead late, as we have a few seconds left, is to stay aggressive. Best form of defense can be possession. Keep the ball away, offense. Control the ball, control the narrative. And we've done that here to see out the game, and somehow we come away with all three points here against Arlington in an exact flip of our first matchup of the year. In that one, well, you know what? Honestly, this result looks very similar to that one, except for the scoreline flipped. Now, if you remember that first game, that was the one where within one minute of the second half, they had three goals on only two shot attempts. One was a penalty, and they had two shots, both on target and both in the back of the net, and all of that against the run of play. We had control the first half. We weren't dominating. It wasn't a ton of shots, but we had the possession. We had the momentum. We had the XG. We certainly had more attempts. They didn't full-on FM us, but, you know, it was pretty close. Today we get our revenge. <laughs> oh, only just, though. Man, oh, man. Uh, that was a pretty epic game for our first one in New Trafford. And with that win, we are now exactly halfway into the season with a plus 12 goal differential, which we had a plus 10 very early on, so we've been very neutral since that time. But with 33 points, we find ourselves in 8th place at just a few points shy of the promotion playoff spots. Money's going to start to roll in. Our balance was just over 800000 before today's match. Let's see where it's at. So we've picked up half a million for that one match. Now, how many people were actually there before we break down the numbers? Let's go back and check that. Nowhere near capacity. The attendance, 46,689, just 100 away fans at that one. Talk about home, home field advantage on that. But that's still a good number. That is still a very solid number. And... You can see, you know, half a million better off than where we were. That's going to add up pretty dang quick. And we do not have another home match until the middle of the month. And, you know, we've got four away matches with that one home match sandwiched in between. And then one more home match just at the end of the month. Uh, but that's still a chance to be about a million better off than where we're at right now. And... You would think that it's nearly time or is time right now to start making those moves on board requests gate receipts were half a million match day income quarter of a million and the corporate facilities brought in an additional 63,000 so that's what 850,000 is what we brought in on the expenditure side of things, we've already made our, our loan payment for the month, uh, that 240000 but you can see how easy that is to, to get covered off now, now that we have the stadium. Uh, but we also paid 113000 in tax. And, you know, if you look at last month, the loan payment is identical, but the tax has gone up significantly. So those taxes, I think, were paid directly already in relation to the gate receipts and match day income, etc., So that's immediate. So that's 114,000 in expenses, match day expenses, 48,000. You know, that's staffing, that's logistical, that's, you know, the food and, th and things that were purchased throughout the day. Uh, as scouting costs, okay, we don't need to worry about that one, but we're looking at, you know, match day expenses of about 160,000. So actually that loan payment uh, coming out as we went through the day, I think was also part of that, which means maybe we're closer to 750,000 
or at least 700,000. Uh, I would say probably is about where we're at. 700,000 is our likely current level home match profit is about 700k that's a lot that's a lot that's going to add up quite fast and we will have plenty of money to take this team from those across the board ones and build something how quick can we get on with it part of that depends on this guy the terrible manager who has picked up one attribute point in goalkeeper handling so far. Uh, fitness was a four. Working with youngsters was either a 12 or 13, so I may have picked up one point, but not sure about that. Uh, motivating, we've picked up one point, so we've we've had enough chats with the with the lads to to get them from a one to a two out of 20. So. Uh, we're not the worst ever any longer, but we're pretty damn bad. Uh, determination, that's where I invested the points. Working with youngsters, determination picked up almost all the points with fitness getting a few points otherwise. Uh, and you can see, you know, we, we were working very, very minimalistic on the assigned points. We made it as low, as bad as possible, but I very much min-maxed two areas. Uh, so with a determination of 13, what that one comes down to for those who are not awfully familiar with the game itself is determination. That is your interactions with the board. So it affects how adept the individual is at getting their own way with the board. The less determined a person is more likely to have their requests turned down. So we don't have a 20. This is out of 20. 1 to 20 is your range. We're better than halfway. You know, we have a roughly two-thirds chance of success uh, when it comes to board requests and how determined we are. And then, of course, it's the other situational, the other side of it. You can have 20 determination, but if the club has no money, the club has no money. But if the club has money and you have decent determination, you can get your way more often than not. We will have money. Are we there yet, though? Do we have enough at 1.3? Or do we want to wait till, say, the end of the month and we've had two more home matches and suddenly we have $3 million in the bank? Probably a smart idea uh, because you can only request so often before you have problems with the board. But also, the more requests you make, the more it's going to build your determination because that interaction, you get better at it over time, like the motivating part bypassing a lot of matches only playing 13 in a season and a half with some of those being quite a few of those being preseason matches at least three anyway <laughs> that's a factor that's a role uh, in that motivating not being necessarily you know great at this point but honestly so far as a manager we've really only picked up about two points that's pretty rough let's wait a month mid-January in the month has been going well so far until this moment Phil Dowdy our assistant coach has left us to take a paid job with the same position with uh, Scarborough Athletic in a moment we're going to try to sign Matty Hughes as the assistant coach I think I've had Matty Hughes as a player at this level before you can see he recently retired in well actually hasn't retired as of yet but he's not looking for uh any tour any type of player position i don't even have the ability to look at his player attributes so he has uh retired it in some way but i think i've actually had him as a coach before as well uh, let's see if we can get him in he looks pretty decent and you know he's he's got 11s his people management is far better than mine his determination is similar i mean honestly he should have the job over myself uh, for manager of the club we have our man maddie hughes is in and in a bit of a shocker quick sim so we did not play this one live but we have beaten Torquay, who are a division above us. They are in the fifth tier. They are in the National League proper. 
fourth round of the FA Trophy. Really thought we'd be out here. And you look at the match stats. We shouldn't have gotten this result. We really shouldn't have gotten this result. Shots were even. Possession was fairly even. XG, they had a little bit of an advantage. We had less than a goal worth of XG. So, you know, getting one goal at that stage is not bad. But it should have finished roughly 1-1. We somehow won that thing 3-0. Uh, Hugill scoring in the 8th minute, Novak in the 21st, and then again in the 56th. Sh shocking, <laughs> to say the least, that uh, we came away with that one. And still three yellow cards, still something we get a lot of, but uh, like last season. It's been a while since Clayton became the man. In fact, it was last season, and he was kind of that turning point where we started to get results been over a year since he took over as goalkeeper i've improved the two guys around him that made up the you know list of goalkeepers on our roster but finally we have a new starter and that's ben killip not a huge upgrade but definitely an upgrade his shot stopping aerial ability is all you know it's plus one and those are the two big keys the rest for us at least at this stage at this level rest are bonuses and the distribution of plus three the mental plus three means he's going to be more consistent and he's going to put them all in the right place for others communication is at least similar and okay fine he's slower but again like i said the rest are bonuses and clayton having a little bit of speed is okay when it comes to like sweeping uh, but killip doesn't need a lot of pace we need him to stop shots and He's going to do that a little bit better at least and he's actually a sweeper keeper having reached the end of the month the club has won six out of seven matches an even better record than what we had in the previous month but it's been two very good months for the club we've moved back up the table after you know having that slow period and that struggle through november we now find ourselves in the promotion playoff positions on 45 points through 28 matches played equal with Chester who we just beat 3-0 uh, a point behind Blythe Spartans a few points ahead of three close chasers but with a plus 21 goal differential you would think uh, we could find ourselves I'd say in probably fourth place in the not too distant future just based on goal differential and the advantage that Boston United and Kings Lynn have, and definitely Tamworth, who look well on their way to winning the league this season. Novak is now equal with Kings Lynn's uh, Ewan Pollock for the Golden Boot Race, plus six over the third place man, so doing really well there. Ebanks has 10 assists, and you know, he's probably the weakest guy on our roster right now. Uh, Clayton with 11 shutouts, but that number's probably going to uh, stall out for the most part, though, you know, you never know. But the AI might continue to pick him as the guy. So things are going well. Could we be on for a promotion this year? Potentially. Let's check those finances as we've hit that last game. We're, the month itself is not quite done, but we've hit that last match of the season, or last match of the month home match. And yes, we have. We've made it to three million now with a profit of two million for the month. That suggests that we could start getting some things done when it comes to the board. So, first board request. Uh, I kind of want to start with training facilities, as that's been a common request of players. Uh, so, let's see what happens with that one. And there it is planned. Uh, training facilities work. I'm pleased to announce that plans are in place to upgrade the club's training facilities. This is expected to cost in the region of 250k. Construction work will begin at the end of the season and is currently scheduled to be completed by July of 2024. Now it's January of 2024 right now, so uh, it's not going to take long. Now, how many levels will that give us? We don't know. But there you go. There is our first uh, solid uptick that is going to help us in the long-term build of this project. I'm hoping that we get at least three to four levels 
and not just you know a level two or level three training facility following this one 250k sounds like it's not that expensive not that much going to be put into it but uh, i'll wait until another home game or two and then we're gonna continue on with requesting more things and see if we can't uh, keep pestering the board they seem to be happy with the finances at the moment and 250,000 is certainly not putting much of a dent into that for the second time this season Novak has won the player of the month with nine goals in six appearances and just about an 8.0 rating with two road games and just one at home we get two wins and a draw over the last three, none of them against top opponents, all pretty much mid-table. Uh, we've got Woking in the FA Trophy fifth round coming up next. That's that's going to be a tough match, of course, as it's another team in the National League, and not only is it another team in the National League, they're third. They are third in the National League, so uh, probably going to go out. We'll be picking up with that to start the next episode. But in the meantime, where we stand for now, 31 matches, we're a little bit ahead. There's a couple games in, in hand behind us, but we are. We're up to fourth for now. Uh, just five points behind those teams, and you know, goal differential-wise, we seem to be capable of gaining some ground, catching up with them. You know, That plus 10 that we had hovered at for a long time has suddenly taken off. Uh, we're doing really well in the FA Trophy, the FA Cup. We are out. It was Gateshead who knocked us out, but that was you know another team in the National League, and obviously well well clear of the drop, no threat there. We're very much looking as a promotion playoff contender now, not necessarily to go up, not necessarily to win it, but to certainly make it uh, feels quite likely at at this stage. But there's there's a lot of games left to play. Forty six in the season, we've got fifteen. 15 remaining and we're getting better and better and we are not losing players very often we have lost some uh, but so far this season the sum that we are losing are these guys that are you know at the bottom right now it feels like i should let adam bale go but he's the team captain i don't want to upset the cohesion of the roster we could do that during the off season and let him go then uh, let most of these two-star guys go Go. and so many of them were you know key players for a long time novak though novak's been fantastic even though he's only seen it as as a two-star guy he plays his role and plays it well and obviously has bagged so many goals for us uh, you know clayton who was our top man for a good while is now been eclipsed by so many new faces and speaking of new faces i mean all of these top 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Elliot Andrew was the only player on the on the team last season, at the end of the season. Those top 14 are all new faces and comprise you know most of the, the first team squad outside of Novak and Ebanks at this point and then Andrew. Uh, so wingers, those attacking players are the only ones that haven't really been upgraded in quite some time. Uh, just not coming across new faces but you can see how much stronger we are defensively we've had a lot of shutouts a lot of shutouts in recent times but with one more home match played we're back up over three billion and i figure it's time to make another request for the board and what to do though when there's so many options uh increase youth level uh, would probably be a really really good thing so we could start getting a uh, better intake coming in uh, at least for the sake of selling players though uh, we don't really need the finances i don't know i think we're going to be climbing the ladder fairly quick so <sighs> it's like which direction do you go junior coaching budget obviously would be another one to to increase youth recruitment i mean all three of those are things we want to do before long we want a u21 team so we can store players there but i think we need to work on that professional status first. Uh, coaching course during the off season, we're we're gonna want to hit that up right at the end of the season. Uh, as right now, we're really short on coaches. I'm coaching a lot of categories, which means that's the other one. Coaches allowed. But let let's start with the youth youth things. Uh, I think we want to start with what we have. Maybe the youth 
coaching budget, junior coaching budget. Let's start with that one. If it all does at least work towards attracting players, right? Building a reputation for the club, you would, at the very least, you would think. That last result, that last home game that we just played, XG was about one for us offensively. You know, we're not great, but we managed two goals. We continually are doing that. We are scoring more goals than the XG that we're applying. But Kidderminster had a 0 0.06. 0 0.06 for that one. Uh, to me, that means they had one shot attempt all game. Maybe two. Spending more money so far has not gone well for us as we have had the increase to junior coaching budget declined. It's been rejected. Okay, well, you know, one out of two is not bad uh, when we're just starting out. Uh, those finances are obviously getting better and rapidly, but we're only a month into that. And they've already agreed to spend some money. I think by the end of this season, though, I mean, we should have a healthy enough balance that at least something else will, will get approved. And as we go through next season, the, on a much more regular basis, I, I would expect we'll get approval. But, you know, how often can you do things? You're going to you're going to have wait periods like that training upgrade, training facility upgrade is not going to happen until the end of the season. So we've got to wait a few months for that to happen. So hurry up and wait could be the name of the game here at some stage. Uh, but for now, to start, would be nice to get this one as well. But you know, there's other things to request, and all it takes is another home game, and the balance gets better. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Cathalon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.